Welcome to the African American Music Survey. This is an interactive course, a textbook complete with embedded videos, instant feedback, and much more. This journey represents many years of my life going back as far as I can remember. My family represents a few generations of African American music musicians. Growing up in our house and our relatives' houses were always filled with music. To keep me out of trouble as an inquisitive five-year-old, my great aunt Virginia, we called her Aunt Nan, sat me on the organ bench during church with her to keep an eye on me. She was quite the accomplished musician. She played both the organ and the piano, and at first at a Methodist church and later on at a Black Baptist church, and directed many large choirs in the community. Though my Aunt Nin had attended Lane College and Tennessee State University and earned a master's degree in music, many of the best musicians of the period did not read music. They played by ear. I was always amazed at how she was equally comfortable playing by ear or reading off a music chart. Like some of you, our Sundays at church were an all day and most of the night affair. It began early in the morning with Sunday school, followed by a special rehearsal with a soloist or small group. Service began around 11 a.m. I stress, around. <laughs> it might last all afternoon. A late afternoon church potluck meal, and then Utnin was off driving very, very fast down the highway to an evening concert or praise service. Sometimes we did not get home until well after midnight, depending on the length of the drive to, to wherever destination we were coming from. The entire day was filled with music. Aunt Nen and her fellow musicians were incredibly talented, dedicated to being the best gospel groups this side of the Mississippi. All they needed was to know the key of a song and off they go creating something wonderful. She insisted that my two brothers and I take music lesson classes during elementary, junior high, and high school. She was a ruthless music teacher, insisting on excellence from the get-go. My first attempt at playing the organ during offering at a service was difficult because my legs were too short to reach the pedals. <laughs> a black gospel version of God Will Take Care of You featured my Aunt Nan on the piano and me at seven years old or so on the Hammond B3 organ. She was all over that piano to compensate for the fact that my little fingers and short legs were limited in their speed and reach. This did not deter her demand for excellence. The three out of 400 people who attended the service were forgiving, but I was motivated to work harder for the sheer fact that I did not want to be embarrassed or ashamed of myself in front of all those people. As a result of this experience, my two brothers and I were involved in jazz band, marching band, concert band, and Aunt Nan's music programs until she passed away at the old age of 80-something. She never would admit to her true age. She made music almost up until the end. She had no children, but almost a thousand people showed up at her funeral. Many young people, some I had never seen before, claiming she was like a mother to them. Many had accomplished celebrity status in the music business. How could this legendary musician be loved and admired by so many people who were not blood relatives? 
You see, it was the inspiration of the music that prompted me to ask many questions as an academic and a historian. Where did this music come from? It sounds different from music anywhere else in the world. Why are these people so excited about this musical experience? Not long after I graduated from graduate school, I was asked to teach a class in African American music. Although I grew up in the middle of, gospel, of the gospel music movement, I played jazz and blues and did all kinds of musical theater. I knew very little about the story behind the music. This began my search. I traveled the world looking for clues and conducting research on the elements that set the stage for this powerful genre of music that continues to inspire people all over the world. During the 20th century, music would continue to serve as an arena where African Americans forged their hopes and dreams, even as they contended with the racial oppression that remained an integral part of American society. A vital part of the fabric of daily life, music helps solidify community in rural districts as well as the urban enclaves to which so many African Americans migrated in the decades following emancipation. Music percolated virtually everywhere African Americans congregated in community institutions such as barbershops, schools, churches, at private parties and barbecues, in spaces of commercial amusement, and on city streets. The songs of slavery provided a language that captured the emotional dimensions not only of slavery, but also the racism that would plague the post-emancipation world. Even Aunt Nen, who was born in 1914, told stories of picking cotton and harmonizing to stave off the heat and the depression of sharecropping. W.E. Du Bois regarded the songs as the rhythmic cry of the slave describing the wellsprung of emotion and songs stirred within him. As African Americans worked to build new communities while moving about the country seeking economic and educational opportunities, they produced a rich variety of musical styles that reflected the range of experiences they encountered, folk spirituals, gospel, blues, jazz, funk, soul, and R&B. African Americans have also played a significant role in classical music and other forms of musical expressions as well. Musicians gave voice to the community aspirations and evoked the extremes of feeling and experience that were part of modern black life. I dedicate this book to Aunt Nan. Not a day goes by that I don't remember all the love, discipline, and music poured into me and my two brothers. From her tireless years of making music for so many people to enjoy. So come along on this journey, read the text, watch the videos, and review the references and links. But hold on, it will be a rocky, sometimes sad, scary, but satisfying ride.